if I think back to, I would say I got the idea as I was publishing my first book, which was right at the start of 2020. Um, and if we go back in our minds of that experience and how much change that we experienced in just a relatively short period of time through the COVID experience, something in my gut was saying, buckle up buttercup, because this decade, it's going to, it's going to be an interesting one. Um, and it wasn't that just in my gut at that point early 2020, I started going back and reading from an anthropological perspective of what other experiences were like during times of change and transition. Um, uh, other books started to come into my perspective. For example, The Fourth Turning um, came into my field of vision, which was, I think, written in 1996, 1997. And it's the idea that the world works on a 80 year cycle more or less. And right now we're in experiencing the, the fourth turning. Um, and if you think about the seasons, right, there are four seasons, you've got yeah. spring, summer, fall and winter. And so one could argue we're in a period of winter right now. And how you approach that, first and foremost, within your mind, because that is going to impact your physical well-being. I said, you know what? Here's the good news. What comes after winter? It's the spring. So if we can keep working towards the spring, you know, growth, rebirth, all of that, it's yeah. like either, either you know, the winter is going to be hard and harsh, and it's going to be hard, but sometimes the hardest periods of time in life, that's when we experience the greatest amount of growth going forward into the future. So I think a lot of it is just, is just how we're going to handle it. So that's why I wrote this because thinking about all of the change and transformation, the subtitle is the leader's guide to achieving exponential growth in the age of AI. And it's funny, someone, they didn't give me a bad review on Amazon, but they gave me a four star review and I appreciated it because they were like, well, it wasn't a book about AI and I, and I, I, to, truth be told, I put this in here because I think that's one of the biggest drivers of change and transformation right now is artificial intelligence. Yeah. It's once again, it's how we perceive and navigate the artificial intelligence journey, which has nothing to do about that technology. One of the things that I'm encouraging leaders to really think about the most important technology that we can learn to master right now is the technology that sits between our ears. It's our, it's our biological computer, if you will, the brain, our mind is the software. And mm -hmm. so we can, must continuously be upgrading the software, just like we upgrade iOS on our phone. You know, we run those updates every now and then to the hardware stays the same, but we're continuously upgrading the software to gain a performance improvement. Man, it, fascinating. And, and I think um, probably the biggest thing, uh, your your book, there is a little bit on AI, but not a whole bunch. But the biggest thing you and I were talking about before is, is how are humans interacting with the new technology? And I think uh, from your, uh, you know, you look back at, um, you know, anthropology and you start seeing how humans behave. What do you think is the worst behavior that people have with AI right now? Treating it like Google, um, you know, watching and observing behavior that's based upon a previous experience. And so case in point, I mean, as of recording, chat GPT was launched November 30th, 2022. So we're about 18 months into this and, and AI exists before, you know, mm -hmm. it went big on November 30th, 2022 with the launch, launch of chat GPT, just like the internet existed before 1994. It's just, that was the inflection point. It began to reach the mass consciousness of humanity. And so now it's being talked about, it's the buzz and whatnot. And, and it's the hype cycle. It's eventually going to reach a peak of inflated expectations and then it's going to continue to drop back down and it'll steady out. But it's it's thinking that we're Googling based upon an AI, thinking that I'm just going to ask it questions, whereas a very practical example of something that I'm utilizing GPT for right now is I'm having it prompt me. So I'm saying act like you're interviewing me for an industry publication. Ask me questions that you would. 
So now it's, I'm using it to download my own mind to then write an article, summarize something, produce a LinkedIn post. Instead of me asking it questions, I'm having it ask me questions to get clarify my own thinking. So it's a re-engineering of the way that we think. <laughs> that is brilliant. I've never heard of that, but it makes so much sense. Yeah. Uh, I, I like it when I can go ask AI, I'm like, what did Reagan Archibald say about thymus and beta four? And then I can pull up my, own, <laughs> like some, some content I've already created on it. <laughs> well, it, it, exactly. And I think that's, that's the deeper aspect of the book here. There are four seasons that lead to exponential growth. And I, I wanted to find what I mean by exponential growth. Exponential growth is when an individual has the perception that they are growing personally and professionally at the same exact time. Mm, I, I think up. historically we have separated our personal and professional lives for the most part. And I just had this realization recently in myself, like I've always been trying to work closer towards integration. Um, very practically speaking, once again, the way that I was utilizing LinkedIn was primarily from a professional context, never mm -hmm. really anything personally on that, on that platform until my wife called me out with the hard truth. She goes, you're far more dimensional than what you're doing on the digital growth front. Mm. And I said, well, what do you mean? She goes, you're a husband, you're a father, you're an entrepreneur, you believe in health and fitness. Why not, why not communicate about those aspects of your life? And I go, because I've never seen it that way. I've never thought about that before. Yeah. Man. And so it's this idea of there are four seasons that we have to continuously navigate through there's a season for learning a season for thinking a season for doing and a season for reviewing but i think where the danger lies particularly in a period of exponential change and transformation is we get stuck doing whatever it is that we're doing because it's all that we know we have to create time to review and reflect to learn to think about how to do even better going forward into the future